Hi, I'm Robert Wolfhardt, and in today's lesson I want to show you how to gather the information about the CPU and memory load of your system. We will have a look at the processes a system is busy with, and we will see how much memory your system has installed and how it is used. And incidentally, I will show you how you can pause the process and reactivate it later on. So let's start with a single command that prepares for you most of the needed information in one single view. But wait, before diving in, if you want to know more about such tools like the ones we talk about here, have a look at my new book, The Shell Toolbox 2.0. In this book, I give you all the tools you need for your day-to-day -day work at the Linux command line, all with explanations and examples. Yeah? You can find it, if you like, at shelltoolbox.com. So this is shell toolbox as one single word, shelltoolbox.com. So okay, here we are, locked into a Linux system, staring at the blinking cursor within our terminal. And our goal is now to get as much useful information about the system as we can get. Perhaps you know what the first tool is that I start directly after logging in into a system. Yes, the command W. And if you want to know more about this command and the information it gives you, take the lesson, the step number one. Yeah? There I talk about everything related to this tool. Yeah? Instead of the W command, let's talk about here about another command. Let's talk about the command top. Top is one of my favorites. If I want to see what's currently going on on the system and how the CPU and the memory is loaded, I use top. Let's start top by simply entering top and hitting enter. Top is a comment that after you start it, it takes over the whole terminal. It displays a bunch of useful information and refreshes them every two seconds yeah, by default. And top does this until you stop it by hinting the Q key. Yeah? Q as the word quit. Stop the top command by hitting the Q key. But before leaving the top command again, let's have a look at the information it gives us. The main purpose of top is to list the currently active running processes sorting by the load they put on the system. Yeah? This list is the table that occupies nearly the complete output area of top. A little bit more about this table in a few minutes. Let's first have a look at the data the top command gives you above this table of processes. There we see five lines, five lines filled with useful information. The first line here is nearly the same line the W command gives you. Yeah? Here it starts with the phrase top, the name of the command itself, and then we have the current time, the uptime, the number of active user sessions, and the load average, yeah, the one minute, the five minutes, and the 15 minutes load. For a discussion about this information, see the lesson, get to know your system, step number one. Yeah. The second line, the second line of the top comment, starting with the phrase tasks, gives you as an overview um, about how many processes or tasks are currently active on the system. And we get the number of processes at each state a process can have. Yeah? So the first number is obviously the total number of the processes or tasks, yeah? therefore the word total. And then we have the number of currently running processes. This gives you, in addition to the load average, a quick insight into how much your system currently has to do. If you are the only one active user on a system and you just open the shell and then the top comment, then chances are great that you see here the number one. Yeah, this is then your even started top comment as a process. If you are, for instance, on a busy web server, then the number of running processes is typically much higher. Yeah. And what about the other processes? We have a total of, let's say, 98 processes and only two are running. What's the purpose of all the others? Well, they are typically sleeping. 
the next number in the row. On a real-world system, you will recognize that the vast majority of all processes are sleeping processes. But this doesn't mean that they are useless. Yeah? They are just waiting for a perfect time to do their work. The web server, for instance, is waiting for a request coming from the user. And only when this request comes in, it has to serve the requested website. And then it sleeps again, waiting for the next request. Yeah. Or let's take the shell. The shell where you have logged in and started the top comment from. Yeah. This shell currently does nothing but waiting for you ending the top comment so that it can give you a fresh prompt waiting for your input. Yeah. But now this shell is just sleeping, waiting for you to come back. After the number of sleeping processes, we see two more numbers. Yeah. We have the stop processes and we have who zombies. Stop processes are processes that were marked as, no, from now on this process doesn't get any CPU time. Yeah? These are stop processes. As a side note, if you have started a process from the shell, like now, for instance, the top comment, and this process is running in the foreground, again, like this top comment, then you can stop this process from the shell by simply hitting Control and the key Z. Yeah, by simply hitting Control Z. Then the process in the foreground will be stopped. You have your prompt back and you can do some other work. Later on, if you want to reactivate a stop process, use the tool FG. That stands for foreground. Yeah? FG. And then the job ID of the stop process. Typically, the job ID will be the number one, yeah, your first stop process in this shell. But if you are unsure, use the jobs command to get a list of all currently from the shell observed processes and their given job IDs. Back to the numbers. The last number in the tasks row gives you the count of zombie processes. These are processes in a, in a transient state. Yeah? They, they are terminated but not yet removed completely from memory. Yeah. Take this number just as an information for now. Let's go on to the next line, the line labeled CPUs. This line shows you exactly what the CPUs have to do. And, and one interesting fact about this line is that it can show you the number of CPUs your system has. Yeah. If you simply hit one, the key with the number one, then this single line will expand to multiple lines, one line for each CPU. And if you later on hit the one again, then all the single lines will collapse back to one single line showing only the averages of all available CPUs. This is, I think, the fastest way you can get a number of available CPUs in your system. Yeah? Start the top command and hit one. The numbers you see in this line let you dive really deep into the load of your system and they give you information about what's going on here. Yeah? But for the sake of this lesson, let's have a look only at the value with the label ID, yeah? which stands for idle. This number measured in percent says how many percent of the CPU resources are currently unused and therefore are idle. So if you see here any number greater than zero, then you know your system has resources left to handle additional processes. This leaves us with the memory resources. These are shown within the two lines below the CPU information. Yeah? While the first line here about the memory shows the information about the real memory, the physical RAM, yeah? the second line shows the swap space and its usage. The swap space is simply spoken space on a hard disk that will be used by the system to swap out memory if the processes or if yeah if the processes on a system needs more RAM than the system really has installed. The first line on the other hand shows you the really installed RAM. It shows you how much of it is used and the remaining free RAM. Don't give too much about the used RAM and the free RAM shown here. Yeah? It doesn't matter how much RAM the system has available. Over the time, 
it will nearly use all of them yeah, for caching purposes and similar tasks. But have a look at the swap usage. If the system constantly swaps out a lot of memory, then there is a high chance that the system is overloaded by memory and therefore the processes are slowed down. If you want to verify this, yeah, if you want to verify if your system is really slowed down because the memory overload, have a look at the CPU numbers again. Yeah? More exact, add the number labeled with WA, which stands for waiting. If the memory overload slows down the system, then this is because the time it takes to write memory pages to the disk and read them in later on. Yeah? And this is called swap in and swap out. And during swap in and swap out, the processes have to wait for their memory. And this can directly be observed via this waiting part of the CPU usage. Yeah? So if you see your system swapping and this wait percentage shows a number of, let's say, higher than 20%, then you know that your system is slowed down because of the memory overload. If the waiting percentage is low, let's say below 5%, then everything is fine, even if the system may be swapping. Now, if the system is overloaded by memory, you surely want to know which processes are eating up all the memory. Well, have a look at the process table below the memory information. This table of processes is by default sorted by the CPU load the processes generate. But if you hit M, the uppercase M, yeah, shift and M, then the processes, the process list is sorted by the memory usage. How many or, or how much memory each process really consumes can be read from the column with the label RES. Yeah which stands for resident. This is a funny name for the memory that comes directly from the installed RAM. In this way, you can identify your top memory consumers very, very easily. If you want to switch back the sorting to the CPU usage, yeah, hit uppercase P. To finalize the overview over the top command, let's have a look at some useful information we can get from the sorted table of processes. First, the process ID. PID. Yeah, this is the process ID. Every process here has its very own number. So this is mostly the best way to, to address a single process later on. Yeah, for instance, to terminate it. Yeah. The column user shows you in which user context a process currently runs. This gives you a good feeling about the permissions a process has. The last column, command, self-explaining. Yeah? This shows you typically how a process was started. Yeah, It means what, what command was used to start this process. Um, but be prepared that you won't see any parameters here. And last, the column time. This shows you how much CPU time a process has consumed from its start until now. Every time a process wants to do something, it wants to run. Yeah? For instance, a web server process wants to serve a request. Yeah? Then the time is measured. The time is measured for how long the process occupies the CPU. And this time is added up during the complete lifetime of the process. So if you see a process here consuming currently a lot of CPU resources and you see at the same time a high number in the column time, then you know that the process was also responsible for a lot of CPU load in the past. Yeah? You see, the top command gives you a lot of useful information about the current state of the system and about its CPU and memory load. And if it is overloaded by CPU or memory, you can see where the load is coming from. And before leaving this lesson, if you want to know more about such tools like the ones we talk about here, have a look at my new book, The Shell Toolbox 2.0. Yeah, in this book, I give you all the tools you need for your day-to-day -day work at the Linux command line with explanations and examples. You can find it at shelltoolbox.com. Yeah? So it is shelltoolbox as one single word, shelltoolbox.com. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. 
I'm Robert Wolfhard. Thanks for being with me for the last minutes. See you next time.